Hey, Energy Express friends, it's me, Joel. Welcome back to week three. Do you like art? I love art. Do you know anything about found art and found object typography? Well, I don't either. Let's go over to our friend Dylan Collins from the WVU Sculpture Program to learn more. Hi everybody, my name is Dylan Collins. I'm associate professor here at West Virginia University. So I work in the School of Art and Design, which is part of WVU's College of Creative Arts. So my job is to be the coordinator of the sculpture program. So I get to teach kids how to use tools and how to build things with awesome materials. So uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is teaching you today about found object typography. So this is really about a love of reading and writing, which I, even in my job working with my hands, I use reading and writing every day, and you will too when you grow up and have a job and are a citizen of the world. So found object typography, what is that? So a found object is a natural or human made object. So this is something that's found by an artist because they like the qualities of it, they're interested in it. And then typography, what is typography? So this is design uh, using forms of letters. So thinking about the design of letters and how we kind of make those into words and sentences. So it's kind of related to the root words like typing. If you think of typing on a computer or your phone, typography is a root word of that. So what I'm doing today is I'm using found objects in order to make uh, names. So found objects. So you might find something that makes you giggle. Like I really love this little nose pencil sharpener. Or it might be something like a piece of a machine. And you say, what does this get used for? What is this thing that I found? Uh, so these are some of the found objects I'm gonna use. So I just started to show you uh, some of the examples. So I made the name Joe and I used these different objects. So this, o, this cog for the O and this other object for the J. So I even used some color in order to kind of create this. So if you have bigger objects, you could also do this as a chalk design, like outside if you're chalking your sidewalk. So that is something to kind of think about. I'm doing these on small paper uh, because it kind of fits the size of the objects I have. So I'm gonna do my name, which is Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N. So this is really about thinking about the shapes and then trying to kind of think about what the shapes resemble as a letter. So I'm gonna start off here with a cool rock that I found to make the D. D. And then I'm gonna put a little opening in that too because that's with the shape of the letter D. So that's another cool thing about this. You can actually use multiple objects in order to make the kind of inside cutouts and the openings of letters. So for the Y, I'm gonna use some dice. So that's something to think about with this is that if you have little things that are kind of around your house, say game pieces, you should always ask if you can trace around them with a pencil or another kind of drawing tool. Uh, but uh, you can even make it like in this case, since I dropped one of them, I'm just gonna trace around the same one over and over. Why didn't I think of that before? Okay, DY. And for the L, I have this nice little plastic part here. Y-L. And then for the A, I'm gonna use my favorite little nose here. So I traced around the nose and then I'm gonna use this nice little mechanical part to make some of the other inside parts of this. And then for making D-Y-L-A, and then for making the N, I'm gonna use some of these little uh, like wooden blocks here.
Okay, all done. D-Y-L-A-N. I hope you enjoy this and I can't wait to see you spell your name with found object typography. Thank you. Okay, I have my insulin, which I could make an L out of, and I have a coaster that can be an O. So I just need to find the E and the J, and then I'll have my name. Here's Dylan reading Dr. Seuss's ABCs. Reading is really important to me. Even in my job where I work with my hands, I love to read and write, and it's a big part of what I do every day. So I always loved Dr. Seuss when I was young. It was really one of my favorites because the drawings are really great, and the rhyme is really wonderful, and it really made me think about how this wonderful imagination could be something that gets to be shared with you in the form of a book. So what I'm gonna read today is a book called Dr. Seuss's ABC. Big A, little a, what begins with A? Aunt, Alli Aunt Annie's alligator, A, A, A. Big B, little b, what begins with B? Barber baby bubbles and a bumblebee. Big C, little c. What begins with C? Camel on the ceiling. C, C, C. Big D. Little D. David Donald Dew. Dreamed a dozen donuts. And a duck dog, too. A, B, C, D, E, E, E. Ear egg elephant. E, E, E. Big F, little F, 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 F. Four fluffy feathers on a fiffer, feffer, feff. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Goat, girl, goo goo goggles, G, G, G. Big H, little H, hungry horse hay. Hen in a hat, hooray, hooray. Big I, little I, 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 I. Ichabod is itchy, so am I. Big J, little J. What begins with J? Jerry Jordan's jelly jar and jam begin that way. Big K. Little K, kitten, kangaroo. Kick a kettle kite and a king's kerchew. Big L, little L, little Lola Lop. Left leg, lazy lion licks a lollipop. Big M, little M. Many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight, mighty nice. Big N, little N, what begins with those? Nine new neckties and a nightshirt and a nose. O is very useful. You use it when you say, Oscar's only ostrich oiled an orange owl today. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Painting pink pajamas, policeman in a pail. Peter Pepper's puppy, and now Papa's in the pail. Big Q, little Q, what begins with Q? The quick queen of Quincy and her quacking quacker do. Big R, little R, Rosie Robin Ross. Rosie's going riding on her red rhinoceros. Big S, little s. Silly Sammy Slick sipped six sodas and got sick, sick, sick. T, 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 T. 
T. What begins with T? 10 tired turtles on a Tuttle, Tuttle tree. Big U, little U. What begins with U? Uncle Ub's umbrella and his underwear too. Big V, little V. Vera Violet Vin is very, very, very awful on her violin. W, W, W. Willy Waterloo washes Warren Wiggins who is washing Waldo Wu. X is very useful if your name is Nixie Knox. It also comes in handy spelling ax and extra fox. Big Y, little y. A yawning yellow yak. Young Yolanda Jorgensen is yelling on his back. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Big Z, little Z. What begins with Z? I do. I am a zizzer, zazzer, zuz, as you can plainly see. The end. Thanks, Dylan. Zizzer, zazzer, zuz. Say that three times fast. <laughs> now we'll go from the ABCs to collecting found objects around our home and making an obstacle course with our friend Malia. Malia? Hi, my name is Malia and I'm from Kanawha County. I'm here to teach you guys how to do a backyard obstacle course. And all these items are things that we have in my house and you can also substitute these things for things that you have in your house. First, we're gonna use the broom and spin around three times. Then we are gonna grab one of these objects, hop onto the plates. Then we're gonna jump over the bins and hampers, then crawl under the spirit stick. You can also use a broom or a shovel or whatever you have. Then we're gonna hop over the scarves. You're gonna stop here and shoot your item into the bin, and you're gonna run back and grab another item. Let's see how fast you can do yours. Next up, our friend Dave McGill teaches us how to use recycled bottles to make a mini greenhouse. Today I'm gonna to tell you about mini greenhouses. Mini greenhouses are just using a plastic bottle and it can be any size to uh, plant some seeds in and let them grow in a protected environment until the conditions are right that you can set them out, whether that be, whether that be you know, the size of the plant or the conditions, the weather conditions outside. If it's too cold, don't want to put plants outside, right? So it's very simple and all you need is a bottle. Uh, this is the smallest one you probably want to use, but it's a small 20 ounce bottle. You can get the one liter or two liter bottles and do the same thing. A bottle, 
a little cutting tool to kind of break into the plastic to open the space for scissors. Uh, you need some seeds. Today I'll be planting marigolds, Colossus red gold bicolor. Sounds pretty, it is a beautiful flower. Uh, a little bit of water and then some soil of some kind. We're using potting soil today. So all you do is you take your bob, you take off this wrapper. I'll strip that thing off, we can make a little incision, cut that thing. Here, put that in the garbage can. And uh, then here's your bottle. You Want to make a little incision here, about uh, you know two thirds of the way down. We have at least three or four inches of space at the bottom. So I'll puncture this. You want to have your parents help you out with that, or your, uh, your uh, someone who knows how to use those tools. And then you slide, slide the scissors in. You can just cut around the edge here. Cut this top part off. We're going to want to use it, of course. It's the top of the greenhouse. There we go, and it comes off. <laughs> there we go. So we have two parts. Into this one, we're gonna put a little bit of this potting soil. Again, you can use soil from your garden, but uh, we're just gonna use potting soil today. I'm out at my garden table, so it's okay to make a little mess. It's kind of fun too sometimes. Fill that thing up, pack it a little bit, and then uh, we're gonna take our seeds. We're only gonna grow a few. I only wanna grow a few marigolds for the edge of my garden, so. <laughs> take these little things out of there. I'll put maybe plant four in here because sometimes they don't germinate and um, sometimes they just don't come up. So uh, we'll press those in about a half inch down, cover it with a little bit of more potting soil. There you go, just bed it in. Add a little bit of water, just enough to moisten the, the potting soil, not too much to fill the thing up. But there it goes. So I can see the water going down through the potting soil down, 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 almost to the bottom. Add a little bit more. We just want to moisten this. We don't want to fill it up with water, but uh, this stuff will take a lot. And then, so now we have water in there. Uh, we'll take the top and seeds, take the top and slide that thing right back on the top of it. There we go. And this will, uh, this will let, we'll keep the lid on. This will let uh, moisture evaporate and it'll condense onto the plastic here. You'll see moisture here. Then, run down and go back into the soil. So you shouldn't have to water this too much. In a few days, you might see little seedlings grow. And once they're about three or four inches tall, uh, you can take them out and transplant them into your garden. So that's the mini greenhouse, pretty cool. I'm gonna take this and go put it in the window. Are you all ready for a second book? Here's Ari Mosley from AmeriCorps reading Chrysanthemum. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I have a great book for you. Today I will be reading Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father. And she was. She was absolutely perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was. Chris Anthemum. Her parents named her Chris Anthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect. And then she started school. 
On the first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way there. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. But when Miss Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Miss Chud that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Miss Chud. Now put your head down. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said at the as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and par cheesy. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looked like a flower, said Victoria, as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, a chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Miss Chud. Now put your head down. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and par cheesy. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked her and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of Chrysanthemum's life. Chrysanthemum wore her, her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. She loaded the pockets. So do you have a favorite outfit? She is wearing her good luck charm outfit. So seven pockets, that's pretty cool, right? Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. The flowers seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Miss Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Miss Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. 
they went out of their way to make a nice impression. Miss Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rhea was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. And Joe was chosen as the all important pixie messenger. And Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy, Chrysanthemum's a daisy. Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. Well, what's so humorous, said Miss Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. Well, my name is long, said Miss Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Miss Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Miss Twinkle, I'm named after a flower too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Miss Twinkle. My name is Delphinium, Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering Chrysanthemum as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at Chrysanthemum longly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. So now it's time for the epilogue. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines. As the dainty fairy queen, Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Miss Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. Hey Energy Express friends, did you have a fun day? I know I did. Well, we'll see you again soon for more fun and more activities. Have a good one. Bye-bye.